Hello, welcome to Cinema Savvy and welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, me and Tate are going to be giving our review on Cars 3, uh, directed by Brian Fee, which is the latest Pixar movie before Coco comes out towards the end of this year, which I'm sure hopefully will be a be much better Pixar movie than this one was. Um, we'll just get straight into it. We don't have a plan for this one. Usually we plan our reviews. We're going to do spoiler-free section and spoilers. This one, I'm really not sure what's to spoil in this film, in all honesty. So I guess I'll just give the heads up that if you do want to see Cars 3 and you haven't seen it already, it's been out for quite a while um, in the US I, already. I, 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 if you do want to go see Cars 3, please reevaluate your life. <laughs> um, it is not worth the time of day. Um, this was like re-watching Cars 2. Uh, it's not as bad as Cars 2. If I'm going to rank the Cars movies, if I just hate myself and just one. going to do this right now, Cars 1, Cars 3, Cars 2. 2 felt like a direct-to-video sequel, um, a kind of fun little 10-minute... You know how with some Disney movies they do like a 10-minute short related to a previous film? It felt like that dragged out for a feature-length movie where it's just like, oh, what if Mater was a thing. British this spy? I think I said it um, as soon as I left the cinema, but it felt like a high-budget TV movie. Yeah. It felt like... You remember that Planes movie that came out a few years ago? You know there's been, two, there there there's been two, two... Fire there's been two plane movies, yeah. Yeah. Um, that I believe those... Didn't they get like a short theatrical run? But I think for all intents and purposes, they were pretty much a direct uh, TV yeah. release or something like that. And honestly, with the animation, you really couldn't tell the difference between those and this, which has the full power of Pixar I've, behind yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen the first Planes movie, and the first Planes movie is actually better than both Cars 2 and 3. Wow. See, I haven't seen um, the Planes movies. I kind of stay... I, I, know, I, know I know it is an original... It isn't really an original idea, but you like the characters at least yeah um so before we get into our review for this as i said like we're gonna we might bring up minor spoilers here and there but i i don't think this will be a particularly long review guys i really don't there's not really i don't have much to say no, on this film anyway i, I have not much except but, um, for um positives um do you have any because i have one one positive um I like the initial, like we talked about Cars 2, how it was like a wacky hijinks movie with Mater being a sports, yeah. being a, I mean, Lightning McQueen, the main character in the first movie, wasn't even the main character of that movie, which was a problem. It was Mater. If I'm going to give a, if I'm going to give a positive to this, although I don't care about any of the characters, I like that this focused more on Lightning McQueen again. I like where it, it's a predictable place to take the character, but I like the thing where it's a new generation of racers. The plot essentially for this film is that there's a whole new band of cars that come out, super sports cars that are even better than Lightning McQueen. And he feels like his time of racing is over. It's time to hang up the mantle, retire, and maybe become some kind of mentor to a new series of cars. That's essentially the plot for this thing. And I like that initial setup because you could do a lot of interesting things with the character with that. But as I said, again, like the negative, if I'm going to bank straight off that, I just don't care about these characters. You look at other Pixar, another Pixar trilogy, Toy Story, for example, much more richer story, much more richer character development across the board. So that when you get to that cars, when you sorry, when you get to the end of Toy Story 3, you feel something. It feels earned. It felt like an end of a generation. It felt like it was a story that someone wanted to tell and wanted to say something from it. Cars 3 feels like a series of movies that's just made for merchandise purposes yeah. for little babies. There's no kind of character resolution into this at all. I didn't feel anything for Lightning McQueen in the first movie, the second movie, or this movie. It was just a complete vacuous experience for me with the Cars films. Here's the thing. With the first Cars film, it has an, it's an interesting concept. Um, it's about naivety, it's about learning to kind of respect everyone else in the world around you and knowing that you can't do things on your own. That's, that's, some, that's some good messages. The second film's message was, if you're dumb, you can be mistaken for a spy. Yeah. Um, that... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like um, the whole Jar Jar Binks thing, right, where he's never brave at yeah. any moment because every situation he gets himself out of is by pure happenstance and coincidence down to his own stupidity. And that doesn't make Correct. a hero. That doesn't make a compelling character. Um, and then this third film can basically... Okay, I'll give it a bit more respect. Um, I enjoyed the idea of the storyline of him wanting to... Look, he's got to find the best place to retire. He's on his way out. 
There are people who are faster than now. He's an old car. Um, he needs to find his new way in this world. And his way in is, oh, one last race, one last race. And I wish they immediately went from the coaching angle. Yeah. I wish that he immediately went to that coaching angle. And then they learned from each other as he began to be a coach. But instead, they kind of play it out as, oh, I'm going to be a racist still. I'm going to be a racist still. And then literally the last 10 minutes, they say, no, I'm a coach now. Yeah. Yeah. Like. And you can clearly it, no, see, I mean, this is. I don't think they're going to stop here with the Cars movies. I really don't. I think this is the lowest grossing one, though, so far. I'm not really the box office guy, so don't call me up. Don't quote me on that. But it has made its budget back, but I don't think it's been anywhere near as successful as the previous ones yeah. are. So maybe people are finally tired of the Cars movies. I know I certainly am. But the yeah. end of this movie, without giving too much away, it does end in a place where they could easily, mm. easily continue this thing for another three movies. We have a new protagonist as well, people. Yeah, this is a passing of the torch movie, um, essentially. Um, and, and the best, the best, the best part of the film, um, and it got me quite excited at the start, and then it just dipped down. Was because of the start was actually quite good. Yeah, we actually got racing in a cars film. <laughs> Not only that, but um, it was an interesting dynamic. Seeing quite a close rivalry again felt a bit more like the first film competing for a cup. And then you have this new guy coming. He wins one race, and. McQueen's still out ahead. He's still got the rest of the season to go. Uh, McQueen kind of, people are slowly getting faded out, faded out, faded out. And McQueen kind of sees himself as the last kind of last old timer who's still running. And he's surrounded by these other cars who are quicker than him. And yet he's still able to, he doesn't understand that he's still able to compete in the midfield, but he can't reach for the top. Yeah. And that caused him to crash by overreaching, by not knowing that he needs to kind of conserve things and play it smart. Uh, another naivety thing, which I think has always been a thing with the character. Good. Stick with that. That's a good plot point. That's a brilliant start. Huge opening, and then it just lands flat. It just it just treads water for the entire know. majority of the movie. It's just from one set piece to another, one hijinks to another. And the comedy in this film as well. The comedy is awful Bad. it's so juvenile i mean again they throw mater in and thankfully i'd say he isn't in this movie as much as the other two thankfully because i can't stand larry the cable guy yeah um but even his antics in this movie feel tired at this point they don't feel i never laughed at mater before but i know a lot of people that do i can't imagine them laughing yeah. at him in this one because he is no longer like an endearing character even if he was one in the first place but what i want to talk about you talked about the crashing there and the opening race thing let's talk about the trailers for this thing for a second because when the first official trailer came out for this thing we were all kind of shocked as to what we saw and the tone that it looked like they were going for with this movie um, oh that would have been awesome if they went for that tone and stuck with that tone we all said on the channel it was like rush it was like a yeah. scene from rush it was this really kind of somber depressing and like really visceral tone to a cars movie um all it was you see some rapid tires driving down the track i think you get a little bit of a voiceover from lightning mcqueen and then you just see his absolute wrecked car spinning in slow motion down the track and then it just came it just faded in like cars three and i was like oh my god like are they finally taking the cars property serious and then the other trailers came out and it was like okay we know exactly what we're getting in for with this one this is just going to be exactly yeah. like the previous two which it was um, but let, let's talk about the history of the Cars franchise in terms of like Pixar as a studio. So before this yeah, sure. point, before the original Cars came out, to me, Pixar was kind of this untouchable studio. It was this Thank studio goodness. that wasn't like new on the block, but the, the stuff they were putting out, the content they were putting out was rivaling Disney at the time. I know that the companies were tied together, but at that point anyway, it was kind of a separate thing with Disney Animation Studios and Pixar, there was a clear difference in the style to each one. Pixar, you had Toy Story, Bugs Life, Toy Monsters Story 2, Inc. Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles. That's six movies in. They were on a roll with these things. Original content. Yeah. I know there was a sequel with Toy Story 2, but even that, many people would say, is better than the first one. And then Cars came out, and 
it felt like a misstep. I won't say that the first Cars movie was awful, but I didn't care for it, and it felt too... The magic of Pixar is that their films, for the most part, always cater to multiple demographics for little kids, teenagers, yeah. and adults. There's always something in the commentary, in the themes, in the characters that can speak to multiple ages. Cars was the first Pixar movie to me that was geared directly towards kids and kids alone. Yeah. And here's the thing, I, I feel like that was a one year dip because they immediately bounced back after that with Wally. Like and Ratatouille immediately after. Ratatouille, like, yeah. Ratatouille, then Wally, then up. They went back on that run again. Then Toy Story Three, amazing. Original content, yeah. And I feel like recently they've kind of dipped again. Um it wasn't it wasn't just the fact that they've only got one original idea film in their lineup, which is gonna be Coco next year, which I mean people say original idea. There have been four or five different films in the last two or three years which have been the same source material or the same plot mm -hmm. to the film. I mean, look at the likes of Kubo and the Two Strings. You've got uh, Book of Life. Um, I mean, you could take from both of those films or any film about Dias de los Muertes um, or any Festival of the Dead, and you've got that film already. Yeah. Like, but. Yeah, The Good Dinosaur wasn't too good. Monsters Inside University Out was terrible. Brave Inside Out was, was good. Brave yeah. was meh. So since 2010, Toy Story 3, they've been kind of running low. There's only been one or two high notes. Um, the main one there being um, Inside Out, um, a true return to form there. But then it dips again. And, and Finding Dory as well. We, we, did, we didn't Finding Dory that. was really bad. Yeah. Uh, you look back on it and the entire film can be put down to Ellen DeGeneres picking up a paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, where is Pixar going? You've this is the one thing which... that... Go on, sorry. Yeah. Um, like, I was going to say as well, um, the last good thing Pixar made was Piper. Yeah. Short film. <laughs> yeah. Which won an, which was won an Academy Award, I believe. For... Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a phenomenal short film, um, animation-wise. Um, but even the short film for this film was yeah. the best. Like, uh, and I think we were saying before we start this podcast, the best part of the animation in this film. So if you're going to see the Pixar film for the animation's purpose instead of maybe not the storyline's purpose, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. No. Um, it, it everything looks tacky, and the only good bits of animation are the stuff that has been tacked on, which is weird to say. Um, so, for example, the cars don't look any better. The environments don't look any better. However, the mud that gets thrown onto the cars looks brilliant, looks beautiful. The water looks amazing. So it's the add-ons which look amazing and the key elements which look exactly the same as Cars 1, which isn't exciting. Yeah, no, and I think a lot of that is down to the actual character designs of the cars, which I always had a problem with. They look, to be honest, they look creepy to me. As a kid, uh, you, you said you said you liked the concept of cars. Even as a kid, I could never get my head around the concept because when you watch it, I go, so is this a world completely run by cars? Do humans exist? Who built the petrol stations? Who built all the architecture around? Dude, dude, it's a post-apocalyptic post post world. Oh god! Imagine if it's set in like the same universe as Mad Max Fury Road. No, it's, like this is—it's just... it's humans. They've merged with the cars. <laughs> um. So, like, the concept to me was flawed. I never really understood the reason why you had to m make a movie about cars. But in terms of the animation, I'll completely agree. Um. I mean, I'm sure I don't know all like the technical aspects of visual filmmaking, so I'm sure they've got a lot of extra tech that they didn't have since the first Cars movie, maybe not even since the second Cars movie, because that came out of, what, um, 2011, I think it was. So they've had six years on it, so maybe it's advanced more since then. But in terms of the results that you see on screen, and especially in a very competitive world now for yeah. animated movies, where it's not just Pixar making great content, it's not just Disney Animation Studios, you've got DreamWorks, you've got DreamWorks, Leica, there's yeah. so many different companies out there yeah. now, um, with all comparable in terms of visual with the you know the effects work with their animation it felt a lot like good dinosaur to me in that respect in that the main key characters don't gel with the environment no. um they look very simplified there's not much detail on them but the environments are stunning and that's kind of what i had with good dinosaur 
Um, it's, it's, there... it's weird. Yeah, Pixar have been in the past geared to all ages. Mm -hmm. um, it's providing mature content to kids and it's providing fun to adults. But with films like Finding Dory, with films which, I mean, you look at Finding Nemo, Finding Nemo is geared towards kids and adults. I mean, the first opening scene is like the main character's wife and children getting eaten by a shark. Yeah. Um, so it's not exactly a film for babies, shall we say. Um, however, Finding Dory was completely unoffensive, um, like didn't, didn't go out to prove anything like anything dramatic or anything worth mentioning at all in that film. No. It was just bland. And same with this film and The Good Dinosaur. They're producing bland films unless they're completely original ideas. And it's killing them. I mean, The Good Dinosaur you could take as an original idea, but the idea itself was bland. Mm -hmm. Unless yeah. they go and outrageous I'm... and do like, what if emotions had emotions? then they're stuck. Yeah, and I, I am really concerned with the future of Pixar at the moment. Um, I'm sure I don't have cause for concern because, I mean, their next film's Coco. I know you and George on the channel don't don't, like aren't particularly looking forward no. to it. Um, I'm still holding out hope for it. I think it will be genuinely a beautiful film. But after that, what have you got? The Incredibles 2, a sequel. Now, in terms of sequels with Pixar, yeah. I think that's one that is earned... If done well, there is a lot that you can say. These are characters that can advance and there is stuff to say about them and see what they're like in later life. You've got Toy Story 4, completely unnecessary sequel. Um, and then God knows what other sequels you're going to have after that. I want to see Pixar just go on a massive string of original content again and get that and just capture that emotion back and capture that strive and hunger that they had as a company when they first started out. Maybe it's one of those they need to press the reset button. Yes. And I feel like maybe it should have been done when they scrapped the Newt project um, because there was going to be a film um, before Coco called Newt. Um, mm -hmm. And they were setting it up um, over a few Pixar films because they had the Newt kind of appear into shot and then scuttle out and stuff like that. And I mean, as soon as they cancelled it, there was no mention of it anymore. Like, it was an original idea. Um, I'm sure as an animal, it would have been a like it would have been just a fun concept to look at. I would love mm. to have seen where they'd gone with that, but instead they're opting for sequels and maybe that's a reflection of what the industry is at the moment because yeah, well, sequels, we're going to be sequel, oh, sequel, like it's yeah. been pumped out. Well, we're going to be talking about it much more tomorrow on our new show um, with all the news that's come out of D23, but you look at Pix um, Disney's slate overall until 2019 on that list, Coco is the only original movie, as far as I know. Um, there's a Disney Toons movie coming out, but that hasn't been confirmed what that is. Mm. In terms of original content, Coco is the only one. Amongst that, you've even with the animation studios, you've got Wreck-It Ralph 2, Frozen 2, two sequels for next year, no original, con no original content really for the animation studios. Then you've got a bunch of Marvel movies, you've got... Star Wars movies, you've got live action adaptations of previous Disney movies. So it feels like we are going through a bit of a turmoil with the companies. Like, I don't know if it's lack of creativity or what it is, but it's it's a weird state of affairs for both companies, I think, at the minute. And I do want to see them get back to their original glory. Um, if I'm going to mention one other thing about Cars 3, the one thing that I did like, um, I did think it was a very nice tribute to the character of Doc Hudson, played by Paul Newman. Um, he died after the first movie. I don't really gravitate to like any of the characters in Cars, but I thought it was very effective how they handled his involvement. He still mm. had a place in the story um, for what shred of character there was for Lightning McQueen. His pre Doc's presence of the character was still present throughout the movie um, in terms of the whole mentor yeah. angle, which you said, and I agree, I wish they'd have stuck with from the off and they just kind of throw it in towards the end. Um, and there are some flashbacks to the first Cars movie with it, and I thought they were effective in their placement. Beyond that, I mean, if we may as well go into overall thoughts now because I really don't have anything else I can say on cars. Um, um, I actually, I have a few things actually very quickly. Oh, okay. Um, sure. I actually have a pitch for this film that would have worked possibly better. Um, instead of having him kind of like, I, I don't even know how it ended. Is he still racing? Like he decides when he finishes and stuff like that. Um, I feel like it was inevitable that he would have to retire at some point. And if they'd done it nicely, like maybe even have him 
he isn't competing with them, but instead he goes out and has fun instead. And because of that, um, they allow him to do like a lap of honor where he gets to see the crowd for one last time. Mm -hmm. That has emotion behind it. <laughs> this film has no emotions other than boredom. It's this is what I mean. It feels like a sort of Saturday morning Disney Channel it has cartoon. A end as well. Dragged out. Yeah. It isn't just Cruz who's the winner. Lightning one as well. Oh. Oh, it's God. like, let's have Lightning McQueen being trained in a kind of car gym where wacky uh, antics happen, and he's really confused with what's happening and really did he, terrible. Did he, did he break their um, how many billion pound machine it was on first yes. try? Yeah. Jesus it's Christ. Like, <laughs> let's have a scene where Lightning McQueen and Cruz Ramirez are in some kind of crash-up derby against a school bus. That can be fun. Let's have a scene with Mater in a field with tractors again. And it feels like you've got all these scenes that are tied together with little to no story tying it through. I don't know how much story you could have in a concept with cars. That's that's also where I'm torn on this thing. The the final thing I want to point out, because we do need to go into Final Fours, because otherwise I'll get very angry. Hey, George. We have a George. <laughs> hey, man, how's it going? I'm good. <laughs> I bring you some breaking news from Cars 3. Um, I haven't seen the film. I'm really bored. I've been out all week. I've come back. Um, but I have something relevant to say. So for anyone watching at home, uh, this trilogy is a piece of shit. And um, I'll be the one that says that. I, I've spent the last, like, what? I've been up since... It's, it's 10 o'clock here in England. I've been up since 3 today. And uh, I was at the Formula 1 today. And I got to the track at, say, quarter past 5, half 5. And in the pit garage was a giant Lightning McQueen. And I think is he called Jackson Storm as well? Yeah. Not that you know he's a black car and they've given him a name like Jackson and Storm, like he's some kind of basketball player as well. Not that not that Pixar's being a racist for this, but then they should have called him Punjab Hanare. Oh, it gets it gets better. <laughs> Literally, they paid people to wear a helmet and sit in the empty cars garage for the entirety of the race, so that they could occasionally cut to some people pretending to be tapping on a keyboard, thinking they're actually in Formula One. And then it gets better, guys. Owen Wilson was at the Grand Prix. And for those who don't know who Owen Wilson is, there's a great meme going around where it's like a lightsaber duel, but every time they clash, it's replaced with wow. And um, he did the post race interview as well on the podium because he, uh, for those that don't know, Lewis Hamilton's the best driver in the world, Tay Don't Cry. And he has a cameo, I believe, in Cars 2 and in Cars 3. And. Um, he was either stoned or didn't know anything about actual real racing. He isn't a good public speaker. You see him in any other film like Midnight in Paris. He's a very quiet person. And he was on a podium of 150,000 people uh, within the track watching him. And then God knows how many on TV. But basically, after two questions, they kicked him off and they brought out a Formula One legend. And I think like one of his questions was like, hey, you, you raced well today. Can you win a world championship? They said that to someone that's won it three times already. And... Uh, my experience, it made me want to watch Cars even less. I'm yeah. just literally here to like join in the, the hatred because this, like this seemed like a great Pixar conversation and I can't um, get to sleep. Yeah, so no, I was going to say this will not feature yeah. on our future discussion of greatest trilogies. It really won't. No, it will not. It's fucking terrible. Um, one thing that I was going to say that really kind of handed the nail into the coffin. Um, towards the end of the film, um, you have Lightning training with Cruz Mar uh, Ramirez or whatever her name is. Yeah. Mm. the dirt track where Doc grew up on and stuff like that and Lightning starts half a lap behind and he has to try and catch her in three laps and throughout the entire kind of series he's getting close to catching her he's getting close to catching her after three laps but he never actually quite catches her and um, he finally get the final time he goes past her and she goes past him again um, which is okay I mean at least he managed to get past her he started half a lap down every single time so um a still a good effort to make up half a lap in almost three laps. Mm -hmm. And um, then suddenly, halfway through the final race, Lightning decides, oh my god, she managed to go around me. She's always been able to keep up with me this whole time. Yeah. Uh, is Tate gone? Yeah, he's kind of... He's yeah, frozen up. Oh, Tate, you, you oh, dropped out then. I have. Am I back? Yeah, you're back now. There's something about him being overtaken by a woman. Yes, let's think about this for a second. Um, he always starts half a lap behind, and he suddenly realizes, oh, she could be a racer. No, she's just lost half a lap in the space of three laps. 
That means she's going to be going half a lap behind the pace every three laps. She's going to finish stone dead last. The only reason why she went past back Lightning McQueen was because she slipstreamed in. Like, I'm sorry, but that means that if she's in clear air, she's going to be way behind everyone else and she's going to lose. That isn't the sign of a good race. That's just the sign of a slow car. Thing is, as well, at the end of this movie, they basically just repeat the end of the first one because if I'm, it's been years since I've seen the first one. But the first one is that he has to try and learn a maneuver, like some kind of drift, doesn't he? Like he turns his wheels yeah. the opposite way to get him around the course. Yeah. In this one, it's she has to kind of drive up the wall and like flip over the car to get away yes. or something like that. It's, that's it's exactly realistic. The same that's realistic and racing. Exactly. And um, I mean, the scene in this where you've got um, Lightning McQueen driving on the beach with Cruiser Mirrors and the try to race each other, it just reminds me of a much better kind of sports movie with Rocky Three, where you've got um, Apollo Creed and Rocky running on the beach together. Maybe that was just me thinking of a better movie or I, wanting to see a better movie than Cars 3. Can I quickly point out that um, Jackson Storm riding a car up against the wall um, should be DQ'd. Um, that's illegal. Um, I know that Vettel did it to Hamilton, and even though I'm not the biggest Hamilton fan, I still think that he should have been given more punishment. I know that's a very topical thing. You've immediately dated this episode, um, Tate. Thank yeah. you. No, that's oh, context. No, it's it is yeah. context. Yeah. We're talking about racing. Um, and if you deliberately crash into a car, you should be DQ'd, no matter how much the other dude is a dickhead. Can I also make a point of what's occurring in England right now? Yeah. So not, not only was, uh, not Jackson Storm, not only was Owen Wilson at the track, Woody Harrelson was at the Formula One track today. Each of these guys has had a new film out this week, one of which is the best film of the year to date, War of the Planet of the Apes. The other one is Cars 3. Tate, you have chosen poorly. <laughs> I have chosen right. I'm, I'm not going to lie, though. Um, as soon as I came back from Cars 3, do you want to guess what I watched? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I watched Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> and how much do you regret not watching War now? I I can still see it. <laughs> I might go see it this week. It, it, my thoughts on cars, because we breezed over it, it's the fact that... I don't even know why I'm on this review. I'm literally that pause. Um, <laughs> it's... I mean, it's, it's making this fun. It's it's without doubt, like, the worst... It's it's the Money Machine one. It should be, like, not even Disney animated. It should be Disney XD. Um, I think in D23, they announced, like, Planes 3 or whatever they want to do. Oh, I bet Planes has beaten Fast and Furious to going to space first, so technically it should be called Jets 3. I don't know. But I... This this is like the worst Pixar with me Pixar. I've had a very troubled experience after watching. It isn't, it isn't the worst Pixar film. Let's be completely no. clear here. No, it's not. Cars um, two still Cars two is worse. Too. Cars two is way worse. Cars, and I mean, Mater. Uh, I yeah. There are other films in the Cars. Uh, sorry, in the Pixar lineup, which are close or can be closely resembled to this film. Um. However, it is not the worst. It is getting close to, and it's come in a row of bad films. It yeah. makes it possibly the, worse. The problem with Pixar is that at the minute it's all money orientated, and yeah. the strength is with Walt Disney animated to a degree, but they're more like Pixar now than Pixar has been for the last mm -hmm. five years. That's the way I've seen it. Inside Out was without doubt their best project since Up. Um, I mean, I love Toy, I love Toy oh, Story three, but I'd say Inside Out was a better film. Um, but the thing is, now you've got to think, so you got to think to the kids. And does a little kid really want to go to the cinema to watch Cars three, or does the little kid want to go to the cinema to watch Despicable Me three? Well, well, yeah, I was thinking of a Disney one, but you've just said it there. And a kid would rather watch Despicable Me because it's, you know, Cars may have a sort of hillbilly truck. But they don't have little yellow like things that like make fart noises and make little four year olds laugh, do they? It's nothing. That kind of comedy is like dead out of the water now, I guess you could say. The whole matrix kind of thing. And Cars 2 completely killed it. Um, I remember when we originally did a Pixar video like, a couple of years ago, I watched Cars 2 for the very, very first time and I was traumatized. Um, <laughs> not even Lewis Hamilton cameo could save it. And I, I mean, what is it? What's his cameo in this one? Can someone tell me? Because I'm really. I didn't even I... pick up on it. Um, he may be one of the other races or something. I don't know. If but he's, he's in it, not... they don't make a big deal of it. No, they don't make a big deal of it. And can we, can we please talk about, um, cause me and Chris both skipped the end credit sequence and it perfectly describes, um, I don't know why Chris, um, missed his, maybe he didn't realize I was one. 
Um, it's something that I've started doing nowadays when I finish a film. Um, the lights come back on, the credits are still rolling, and I look at my phone, I go online, and I search, uh, does this film have an end credit sequence? If it says yes, I'll usually stay. Um, if it says no, then obviously I'll leave. Um, usually there's nothing, no point in watching the credits. Um, better to just kind of get out of the film and maybe have a discussion with a friend. Um, with this film, I looked at it and saw, yes, there is an end credit sequence. Okay, good. And then I read the uh, little description underneath the Google search, which said the word Mater. So I clicked on it. And it described to me a um, scene from previously in the film. So a scene that was actually in the film. Um, slightly longer um, than what was shown in the film. And it just shows Mater not being able to pick up a phone. And I bet so, the credits for this thing would have been about 10 minutes long or even more because they're quite long for animated films. I decided, I decided to, I just went, no, I'm not doing that. And I walked out. <laughs> not today. Um, if I'm going to sort of like give my thoughts on this film now, I'll agree with what you take, what you said, Tate. It's it's completely inoffensive. It isn't, it isn't the worst Pixar film. It isn't. That still goes to Cars 2. And I wasn't offended by this movie or really any of the other Cars movies, not to the extent of like, say, Finding Dory or Monsters mm -hmm. University, which to me is just completely trashing over one of the best, yeah. two of the best animated films ever made. Definitely. So I didn't have that like complete, like reviled hatred towards it. This is just kind of a, you throw it on in the background and you kind of just let it wash over you for 90 minutes or how I wouldn't even let my kids like if when I get kids like watch this film because they would get bored there's nothing there's, there's so nothing. many good animated films out of there with with stories to tell and things to say and this this whole trilogy doesn't say anything and you just think about that they've made a trilogy and what can you take away from these characters I they think the best one as the we've said, is the first movie to make a trilogy out of yeah the thing is, could you have made this a compelling trilogy? Here's the thing, though, I feel like they, it's, it's weird. They've chosen poorly with their sequels. Um, yeah. And when I say that, they've only been able to do two good sequels, and that was from one franchise. Um, mm -hmm. That being Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3, um, which are brilliant films, like up there in the heights of the Pixar lineup. Um, they have chosen poorly in the order of what they do their sequels as well. They chose to do Monsters University. They chose to do Finding Dory. Um, with Monsters University, I can see a sequel to that. That has an entire universe built around it. Brilliant. But instead of going forwards, they decided to go back. And instead of developing the characters further, we see how they developed themselves. And it's, it doesn't work. With Finding Dory, it just it doesn't move anywhere. It there takes is us, no. Go on, sorry. It takes us on a journey, and the best part of that film is I am Sigourney Weaver and welcome to the aquarium. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say um, one thing about Cars Three? Right. Sure. Yeah, go on. Uh, it's made two hundred twenty-five million and it's been out since what June? Despicable yeah, Me that's, Three. That's Despicable Me Three made thirty million less than its opening weekend around the world. Okay. I, I did mention, I, I didn't know the box office, you're the box office guy out yeah. of all of us, but I, I did mention that earlier that I think it is the lowest grossing one. Um, I still think that we'll probably see, this won't be the last we see of Cars, they'll do some kind of TV show or continue it somehow. What, like, um, what was it, How's Train Your Dragon as a TV show? Yeah, exactly, they'll uh, do something like, like that, yeah. that, I expect. The they'll cross over planes and it'll be like the, the ice and Cars the universe. Engines. Yeah, there you go. The, Limits just, uh, just lift up the lid of the car's engine, just see an engine just screaming, just like, ah! <laughs> it's like a Dalek, it's just like a gooey object inside of it. But anyway, what I was going to say was they've picked their sequels poorly. Yeah. Um, they went with Toy Story, which was the right choice. They then had The Incredibles, something which they can really, like, that, that has loads of sequels. Like, you could go nuts on that. Tate, let this um, just sink in. It's been six years between Cars 2 and Cars 3. It's been 14 years by the time that we get an Incredibles 2. I know. And I we know. haven't had Bugs Life no, 2. They've done that no. in such a kind of bad order. And, I mean, we look at the other Pixar properties, stuff that which, which can have a sequel. Stuff that can have a sequel. Inside Out. Not, not Up. Not um, Wally. Inside Out, maybe. Um, like especially Hunt, with... Yeah, team, team Herb would be... Um, Team growing up would be really good, I think. It really would. Um, but yeah, the, oh, 
Whoever is thing is with making... Monsters University as well, for example. If you were, I don't think Monsters Inc. should have had a sequel, but a sequel was where you should have took that movie based on the ending. If you were yeah, going to do not one, not a prequel. There was no point of doing a prequel because you get no information from that movie that you don't already get from the beginning of Monsters Inc. What about Monsters Graduation? <laughs> no, what they I should, don't know. What they, the instead of going Monsters University, Mon Monsters Home instead of Monsters Incorporated, maybe they go. Um, Monsters Monsters in Homecoming. Can we get can we get Michael Keaton as a voice in it? <laughs> oh, Somewhere. It's it's um, Pixar's in a bad state. They're so, in a bad state right now. Uh, Chris, did you see the Coco reference? The terrible Coco reference in this film. Um I didn't see the Coco reference. I saw a Pizza Planet rocket off one of the yeah. cars. Um, which that, that's kind of center stage though. You can see that one. So, I missed um, the Coco The Coco reference in this film is um they have a stereotypical Mexican slash Spanish character. Um, they have him on a treadmill, and they say, "Are you missing home?" And he says, "Oh yes, I am missing home." And then they show up on the screen the town of Coco. Oh, um, yes, because they couldn't yes, drive yeah. at home hard enough at Coco. And I'm sure that the, I'm sure that that number, what is it, A one one three or something? What, I, oh I don't yeah, know what it, it's, it's the it was the office name of Sterling. Uh, Sterling. It was like A one one three Sterling mm -hmm. next to it. So, um, so you, you paid, Stur you paid I, I, way more attention to this movie than I, I did. I guess Sterling, Sterling was the bad guy in the end because um, he had a marketable product and um, the product was refusing even though they signed up to a contract. Um, so he was doing business and he's a bad guy for that. It's just it's just a bad movie, really, isn't it? So it's completely inoffensive. It's just it doesn't feel like there's any inspiration behind um, it, which I know Chris, is harsh because um, we actually we do have a question. Um, I, okay. It was directed at me, but I'm sure it's actually directed at you, uh, Chris. This is from Suzanne. Um, would you put um, this or Moonrise Kingdom? Which would you rather see again first? Planet of the Apes. Yeah, Planet of the Apes. Um, oh God. Probably Cars Three. It's about you the same me. running time. You heard cars, I, I know. Cars but, uh, I can't. Wes Anderson. I really can't. Cars will have Easter eggs as well. Yes. Um, I just that really dude, I, I don't care for Moonrise that Kingdom. Really hurt. It's so <laughs> bad. It's so so bad. Oh. And don't get me wrong, Cars Three is as well. But I can just switch my brain off Cars Three. Oh. Moonrise Kingdom just makes me angry is that I'm wasting my time. Uh, yeah, um, I've pretty much said everything yeah. I can on Cars 3. I wouldn't recommend this movie. As we said, it's been out for quite a while in the US. I don't know if it's still getting a big theatrical run out there. Um, in the UK, it's, it's going to be that big kids film for a little while. It's going to have like a little blip, but then it's just going to fade out of existence once we get into the month of August. No one's going to watch this film. No one has watched no. this film. Except you guys, sorry. Um, kids will watch Despicable Me 3. Intelligent people will watch Planet of the Apes. Sophisticated people will watch Dunkirk. And then if they want to mix and match it, then they'll go back to one of the ones I've just mentioned. I or genuinely... Atomic, Blonde. Atomic Blonde's out soon. I think it's end of August. I, I genuinely don't think any people, any kids, any adults would want to actually watch this film. Like, Were your guys' cinemas full? Um, mine was half full, but um, it was funny. One of the families walked in um and then one of the steward people came up to them and kind of whispered in their ear and i think they went into the wrong screening i think they were trying to find despicable me precisely and instead they went into the cast screening and they had a little whisper in the ear about five minutes in and then they walked out and uh yeah i think they went off to a screening if not then they snuck in with their kids which is a bit weird in mine there was about 15 other people in there besides me it wasn't a big crowd um, i was expecting more for a weekend in all honesty i know it's a sunday but um... some with a good kids film you have the kids as soon as they walk out of the cinema you see them jumping up and down clapping you see them like the acting happy with this one everyone's head was down yeah like it, no one was speaking to each other it's very eerie it was just like everyone's just kind of walking out and it's just like mm -hmm. yeah how was that for you it was okay I bet the kids are crying because they speak with me through a side out. That's probably why. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, 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 I, I've said everything on Cars 3. Do you guys have any final thoughts? George, you didn't see the movie. Do you have any final thoughts on Cars 3? Ka-chow. ka, -chow. ka -chow. Nice. <laughs> Tate? Uh, 
That'll do it. <laughs> that, says, that says it all. That says a thousand words. <laughs> right, guys. So that'll do it for our review on Cars 3. Be sure to comment, subscribe, let us know what you thought of this movie, if you've been seeing it at all. Uh, what do you think of the other Cars movies? Any of the Pixar ones? Anything you like, please do drop us a comment. Tomorrow, we'll be going live for a very special episode of Cinema Savvy News, where we'll be going through all of the news and drops and leaks, everything that at D23. So we'll have Marvel news, we'll have Star Wars news, Disney animation, and Pixar news. There's a lot to discuss. We'll have times that we're going live tomorrow there'll be links to those um, in the description down below with our Facebook and Twitter pages so have a look out for that um, there'll be more trailer reactions from me I've just recorded one for the D23 Star Wars Last Jedi behind the scenes feature I think it's called that so look out for that and uh, I mean you two guys have got your shows as well coming out next week so, uh, um, yeah. yes there's like I always say now there's too much stuff to keep up with um, really Game of Thrones is back in approximately 3 Ooh. hours and 45 minutes so um, I, I I don't know if I can stay up to it. That would be me be up twenty four hours. Um, so whether I nap and watch it or watch in the morning about speaking to a human beings, I don't know yet. But there'll be reviews on this channel. Whether or not I'm on them, I don't know. I might pop on for episode one. But yeah, Game of Thrones is back. That should be better than Cars. Uh, I would actually pay to watch Lightning McQueen get in a fight with the mountain. Um, <laughs> that would be very good fun. Um, yeah. You just crush the bonnet like over his head. And you just have oil spray. No, the windscreen, his eyes are popping out of the glass. And... <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Ka-chow. Ow. That's how it would go. It's <laughs> <fine work. laughs> um, But yeah, so that'll do it for us, guys. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.